Let's take a look at the basic image operations that you can do in Images Plus. And this is image open image manipulation types of functions. Uh, to open an image, like all Windows programs, you'd either use File Open or the Open Toolbar button. Uh, once that's displayed, you can left click on an image to uh, select it for open or you can hold the control key down and select more than one. Once you have your selection complete, you'd press the open button to actually open the images. Okay. Uh, a little bit of information about each image. The caption bar displays the file name that was opened, its color type, RGB, it's a color image, and its display percentage. It's displayed at 93% of its full size. Here's a much smaller image that's gray or monochrome single channel and it's displayed at 100% of its size. Um, the open images menu option has several options there that allow you to manipulate one or all open images at a time. Uh, you can cascade, minimize all images, restore, stack, which means put them all on top of each other, or tile. And once they're tiled, as long as the main images plus window is the input focus, you can use the arrow buttons to move the images around. Okay. Now you may have several images open and one may cover another, you can use this open image list to select the one that you want on top. A lot of times that's easier than looking through uh, and trying to find them in other methods. Okay, uh, let's see. The zoom toolbar buttons, those are used to zoom an open image. And we've got some options here as well. Let's position these a little different. Let's put that one there and maybe this one over here. Um, these two zoom a single image out or in by the default value of 10 percent. We'll look at that in a second. So if I want to zoom it in, I use the, the plus and see the display percentage increases. Here I'm zooming out and it decreases by 10 percent. If I want to do the same kind of operation with all open images, I'd use these two. There's zoom all in, zoom all out. Makes them smaller, makes them bigger. Okay, now if you want to change that zoom percentage, you'd come over here to the view menu and use the uh, zoom command. This will allow you to change the zoom percent. Maybe you want to use five percent. So now I'm going to zoom by five. Uh, or maybe you want to use one of these preset ones. 400 percent if you want to look at each pixel in detail. 300, 100, 50, 10, things of that type. So these are the ways you, you change the display of open images. Uh, what else do we have? Let's see, over here on the system options, most of these options govern how an image is opened and displayed. The first one, no adjustment for display. That means when you open an image, it won't be stretched in any way. It'll be just the actual data displayed, and that's the default. If for some reason you want to stretch the uh, brightness of an image automatically when it's opened, you can use uh, the auto stretch. But uh, the Images Plus, like Photoshop, is really geared towards no automatic brightness increase when you open an image. Initial image display scale. Well, that's what's making these uh, windows come up at the size they do when they're opened. It's auto fit to screen. Uh, when you open an image, it'll look at the size of the image and scale it so that the whole image will be displayed on the screen, not just part of it. If 
if you want to override that, you can specify a default uh, 50 hundred percent here. Background color, well the default is blue. This is the main window, it's blue. You may like red, green, white, or one of the grays, or even black better than blue. Uh, and this is how you control the background color of the main window. Now this next one, default new file type. Some of the operations in Images Plus take a set of images and create single new images, one or more. Uh, and when you do that, you need to know, well, what type of image do you want to create by default? That's what this controls. The default is compressed 16-bit, either color, if you're working with color, or monochrome uh, fits. Uh, a good example would be combined files. You may combine 100 JPEGs, TIFFs, or FITs down to just one file, and that file that's the stacked image is a new image, and you need to say, well, what kind of a file output do I always want to use for combined files? And that's what this controls. Uh, some of the image set operations, well, I mean, they all take a set of images as input and generally either make a single or multiple output file. Um, a lot of those, if it's many in and many out, they'll take the same type of file as input for output unless you have an option there to uh, override that. Uh, a good example would be CR2 Canon RAW files. You could select many of those, but you don't want to write Canon RAW as an output. You want to write them as either FITS or TIFF. So that control would have its own set of output file controls that would override this. This is for, generally speaking, the commands that take many to one or many to a couple and uh, don't have an option on the command to specify the output type. Combine files, split files, combine LRGB, and the, uh, the uh, edit mosaic command would be uh, ones of that type. Image math where you take a couple images, add them, subtract them to make a new image would all be governed by this control. Okay, background thread priority. A lot of the operations in Images Plus run in threads. The main window here, this window with the main menu, is the main thread. If you start something like one of the image set operations or auto image set that will calibrate a line and stack a whole set of images or sharpen maybe the background smoothing enhancement filter, a lot of the functions run in separate background threads. If you want to run those at a slightly lower priority than the main thread or the main window thread, uh, you just use this option. Otherwise, the default is generally with the newer computers the best. And that's because most of the newer computers are dual core, quad core, so they really have multiple processors. If you start automatic image set processing on a multiple processor machine, it'll run nicely on one of the processors, and that'll still leave other processors available for the main window to run enhancement or yet another image set operation. So this is really, I guess for uh, maybe older machines, if you've got a new dual core, quad core, multiple processor machine, you probably just want to leave this at normal. Uh, Canon convert color space. Uh, this is for converting raw files to uh, to color images. The default for just about every maker is sRGB, and that's probably where you want to leave that. It does give you a chance to override it. You can also override it in Canon Nikon cameras if you like. But again, this is rarely used and should be left at system RGB. Uh, JPEG quality. This is the compression quality. The default's 100, and that'll give you the best quality JPEG images. If you start to drop this much below 90, you're going to notice a real difference in the quality of the, your JPEG images. Uh, maximum number of images set at 100. Well, 64-bit images plus can open a lot of images that are really big. 32-bit 
there's less resources to work with and it's uh, generally a smaller number. Uh, the default's 100. You may only be able to open 20 or 30 at a time or even less depending on how much memory you have, your video card, things of that type. Okay, now let's take a look at this enable sliders. Uh, it's checked by default. I'm going to close this since it's the last one, but just remember that this is checked by default. And since it's checked, when I open up any of the enhancement filters, the enable sliders box is also going to be checked. If system options, if it's unchecked there, when I open up an enhancement filter, it'll be unchecked. The default, and I think you want to really leave it this way, would be enable sliders checked. Now what this does is, uh, let's zoom that up a little bit. Um, when I apply a filter to an, to an image with enable sliders checked, see I'll change the value and it'll, uh, after I stop moving the slider, it'll be applied automatically. If enable sliders is not checked, then I can change multiple slider values and nothing happens until I press apply. So depending on the size of the image and how many changes you want, you probably most of the time want to use enable sliders checked to actually see the change automatically. Uh, but if you want to change several values, uh, then unchucking enable sliders, making your changes and using the apply button makes a lot of sense. Okay, now the last thing I'd like to look at here, let me close that and reopen it. There we go. Is this uh, uh, the close lock, close unlock, and close all images. If you have several images open at a time, one will probably be covering some or all of the others. And maybe you just want to keep one or two of the images open and close all the rest quickly. Well, what you can do instead of going around and clicking an X on each one that you want to close, is you just pick the one that you really want to leave open, press the close lock button. Now this one can't be closed until you unlock it and then press the close all and that'll close all of the open images and just leave the one or couple that you've closed locked. When you're done with the image you can try to close it but it'll tell you it's closed locked. In that case you come up and press the unlock button and then the close will, uh, will close the image. Um, the help PDF file is on the install CD and it has detailed information on all of these commands and the about images plus box if you ever want to know the version of images plus it'll it'll display that for you I think that pretty much covers the just the basic manipulation of open images uh, the next video clip will uh, show you how to get statistics about an open image